Pritchard Brothers Plumbing. How our history expert solves local mysteries. Who, what, when, where, why, and why not? Well, sometimes. An article by Vance Lauderdale. Vance Lauderdale. Ask Vance is the blog of Vance Lauderdale's, the award-winning columnist of Memphis Magazine and Inside Memphis Business. Vance is the author of four books. Ask Vance, the best questions and answers from Memphis Magazine's history and trivia expert, 2003. As well as Ask Vance, more questions and answers from Memphis Magazine's history expert, 2011. Vance Lauderdale's Lost Memphis, 2013 and Vance Lauderdale's More Laws Memphis 2014. He is also the recipient of quite a few nice awards, including the Best Blog 2017 from the Society of Professional Journalists Green Eye Shed Awards. The creator of several eye-catching wall calendars and the only person we know with a vintage shock treatment machine in his den. You can email Vance at askvance at contemporary-media.com. Vance is one of my favorite authors, and it has long been my goal to expose more folks to his thoughts through the magic of audio, video, producer play on that thingamajig we just can't seem to be without the cell phone. Reading text on those things is for those with much better eyesight than most of us possess. So hopefully he will forgive my efforts to bring more exposure to his work by transforming it to the spoken word. Dear Vance, I'm restoring an old building at 433 Madison and hoped you could tell me something about its history from FT from Memphis. Dear FT, for years I've admired the Pritchard Brothers Plumbing Building with its white terracotta facade, beautiful stained glass signage, and matching pair of black wrought iron doors. But hold on, a closer look reveals the doors aren't identical. The left-hand door carries the company name and fancy iron work and serves as the entrance. The right hand door, a bit less ornate, holds a blue shield with the initial P and is actually a gate opening onto a narrow alley that runs alongside the building. These confusions should have been my first clue that telling the history of this company would be more challenging than I expected. I presumed it would be a simple matter of finding out who the Pritchard brothers were and then I could share their history by looking through old city directories, newspapers, and the vast archives of the Lauderdale Library. Well, you can imagine my dismay when I discovered right away that two different companies in Memphis, operating at the same time, were called Pritchard Brothers. What were the chances of that? My hours, days, and weeks of research kept turning up references to both companies, and I got so bewildered I had to slump on my lazy boy with a cool towel on my forehead, resting my worn-out brain. I finally got it straight. It seems brothers Lewis and John Pritchard owned a construction firm during the early 1900s and erected homes and even a few office buildings throughout Memphis. That's the last time I'm going to mention them, though, because these two fellows weren't related to the company FT has inquired about. Instead, I will devote this column to Pritchard Brothers Plumbing, and the two brothers who started that firm were J. Fred Pritchard and Albert L. Pritchard. Both gentlemen were born in the 1870s in Joliet, Illinois, and came to Memphis around 1890. According to the old city directories, in 1900, the brothers teamed up with a partner, James Evans, to open a plumbing, steam, and gas fitting company. This was located at 71 Union Avenue, not 433 Madison. So, this brings up more confusion about the history of this company. How old is the fine-looking building on Madison? The Shelby County's Assessor's website gives a construction date of 1903, and this same date is repeated in other stories I've encountered about the Pritchards. But I don't think that's correct, and let me explain why. According to old city directories from 1900 to 1915, the property at 433 Madison was a private home owned by a series of five different families over the years. The homeowners included a barkeeper for the Gaston Hotel, a clerk for the Southern Railroad, and a barber 
In 1906, in fact, that barkeeper, a fellow named James Snell, ran a commercial appeal classified as that offering for rent one six-room flat with bath, gas heat, attic, and reception hall. This must have been a rather large house if the rental area included a reception hall. Meanwhile, during this time, those same city directors showed that the Pritchard brothers had opened their plumbing company downtown at 71 Union Avenue. Around 1910, they moved to larger facilities a few blocks east at 167 Union. Operating out of such a small building, Pritchard Brothers, still teamed with Evans, took on some of the best known projects in our city. They were mainly involved in large commercial enterprises and over the years they landed the plumbing contracts for such landmarks as the Municipal, later Ellis Auditorium, the Randolph Building, Tech High School, Fairview Junior High School, Tennessee Ice and Coal Company, First Methodist Church, and Memphis General Hospital. Well, there's more. Other projects during the 1920s and 1930s included the Adler Hotel, the DeSoto Garage, the Farnsworth Building, later called the Three Sisters Building, a large Studebaker dealership on Union, the Park Avenue Masonic Lodge. I mean, the list just goes on and on. The Pritchers did quite well. Albert and his wife, Irma, lived in a nice house at 195 South Belvedere. Fred and his wife, Mabel, confirmed my theory that at some point, almost everyone I know or have written about has lived on Harbor. They and their son, Fred Jr., lived at 1800 Harbor. Sometime in the 1930s, Albert Pritchard left the plumbing business to take an executive position with the Com Commerce Title Company, later moving to the National Bank of Commerce. He remained there until his retirement and passed away in 1956. When Albert left, the remaining brother Fred brought his son aboard. This was a smart move. A graduate of Georgia Tech, Fred took over the company when his father retired and kept it in business until Pritchard Brothers Plumbing finally closed in the mid-1970s. Among their last major projects was the plumbing contract for the new Goldsmith Department Store in Laurelwood, which opened in 1962. In fact, I imagine this was the last project that involved the company co-founder, Fred Pritchard, who passed away the year before. The Sun kept the company going, but finally shut the doors in the mid-1970s. When he died in 1983, his newspaper obituary noted that he had remained active in many trade organizations in this area, such as serving as longtime president of the Civitan Club. But the headline focused on an accomplishment from his Boy Scout days in Memphis, Liberty Bond Effort Police Presidents. It seems Pritchard had been a member of Troop 22 here and during World War I had sold more than $450,000 in war bonds, an astonishing sum in those days. The building on Madison changed hands in 1980. That year, Charles and Connie Manis, who operated the national franchise of ASI Sign Systems, purchased 433 Madison. Charles also specialized in architectural renderings and Connie owned the Connie Hendricks and Associates Advertising Agency. They also leased portions of the 3,800 square foot building to local artists and photographers in need of studios. I should tell my other half dozen readers, FT, that you are the president and founder of an investment company called Preserver Partners, who bought the property several years ago with plans to rehab it as a commercial space. The two-story building at 425 Madison on the west side of the Pritchard building serves as the Preserver Partners offices, so that block is seeing new life. The interior of the old Pritchard Brothers building has been gutted. The facade will remain relatively unchanged, but the distinctive glass windows will be moved inside and used as a decorative element, unless the new tenants want to keep them in place. Whatever happens, I hope they are protected some way. Windows like that would be hard to replace if damaged, and they survived a close call a century ago. 
According to an old Commercial Appeal article, on the night of August 25, 1921, a crew of drunken men in a large automobile destroyed several large plate glass windows with bullets and bottles. Among the targets that night, all in the same area, were the 715 Tire Company, the Madison Storage Garage, Page Automobile Showroom, Nelson Plumbing Supply, and yeah, Pritchard Brothers Plumbing. The police fired several shots at the party, which escaped because their car was the fastest. I know what you're thinking. Bullets, bottles, a fast car, and a police chase usually means one thing. The Lauderdales at it again. Vance Lauderdale is the history columnist for Memphis Magazine and Inside Memphis Business. His dramatic life story is so well known that school children are taught to recite it for extra credit. If you enjoy Vance's musings, why not subscribe to the Memphis Magazine weekly newsletter and find all that is happening now and has happened in and around Memphis. The email is free and you can find the link below this video to get your adventure started.